What's up, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 16th, 2013. Let's jump right into this episode, starting with software updates. First, let's talk about Apple. Last week, I talked about some Apple software updates, ones for OS X and Safari, but this week, they released even more. They released an OS X server update, an iTunes update, and of course, the big one, iOS 7 iOS is the operating system for iPhones and iPads, and iOS 7 brings a bunch of new features to iPhones, but it also includes around 80 security vulnerabilities as well. So if you use iPads or iPhones, go get iOS 7. On top of that, this week Mozilla released Firefox 24, which fixes, I think, 17 security vulnerabilities in the pro popular product, seven of which were critical. So if you use Firefox, update that as well. The first story of the week involves some web application vulnerabilities in the NASDAQ website. And by NASDAQ, of course, I mean the American Stock Exchange NASDAQ. During the week, we learned that a security researcher, Ilya Kolochenko, discovered some cross-site scripting vulnerabilities on NASDAQ's website. And if you know about cross-site scripting, uh, these are pretty serious vulnerabilities that can either allow an attacker uh, to gain access to your computer as though he were that website. So for instance, he might be able to access your NASDAQ cookies and stuff like that. Or they can even allow an attacker to potentially inject malicious code on NASDAQ's site or get NASDAQ site to redirect to some other bad place. So these were some pretty significant flaws. But what's more interesting about this story is how the NASDAQ site maintainers reacted to this vulnerability disclosure. According to Kolochenko, he practically spammed NASDAQ's administrators trying to get them to respond to his vulnerability disclosures. But they didn't respond immediately. In fact, it took them about two weeks to respond to him, according to what he says. That said, NASDAQ has fixed the vulnerabilities. So to me, what's more interesting about this story isn't the vulnerabilities themselves, but how this particular organization reacted to it. Personally, if you run a website or any sort of, of internet service out there, you might be vulnerable to something. You know, everyone makes mistakes. Even the biggest company in the world that tries to create secure code may suffer from vulnerabilities occasionally. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean they're a bad organization. But what does make the difference is how you react to any sort of vulnerability disclosure. If someone is kind enough to tell you about a vulnerability, how you react to that is going to make all the difference in the world. If NASDAQ, in this case, had actually responded to Kolochenko earlier, even if for whatever reason they weren't able to fix the issue, I bet he would have been much more positive about his experience with them. So I think the moral of the story is if you manage any sort of internet service or website and you have any sort of security disclosure, keep calm, carry on, don't go crazy, but at the very least, even if you can't fix it super quickly, be sure to respond to that security researcher and communicate with them. Uh, if you're transparent about the situation, I think you'll find that most security researchers are more than willing to work with you. Next, let's move on to a slightly more humorous story. Well, that is if you can call a cyber attack humorous. During the week, we learned that a lot of NASA web properties were defaced. And yes, I'm talking about the US space agency, NASA. As it turns out, though, they were defaced with a message that said, stop spying on us. And the message came from some pr Brazilian hacktivists or attackers. And it seems these Brazilian activists were upset about the latest uh, news that the NSA has been spying on their president and, and other sort of Brazilian authorities. So a lot of people assume that these NASA attacks were perhaps uh, some sort of miscommunication or misidentification of the NSA. 
Now, personally, I'm not sure this is the case, as ironic as it might seem. Yes, NASA is close to NSA, so it could be a case of mistaken identity. But one of my personal theories is many hacktivists are not as skilled as maybe cyber criminals and nation state hackers out there. A lot of their attacks are very opportunistic, meaning they're not necessarily directly targeted. They might try to find sites related to their victims uh, where they can get close to them. So in this case, maybe NASA had more insecure sites than the NSA, so that's all these Brazilian hacktivists could get. In either case, it was kind of a funny story. Hacktivists attacking uh, NASA when they were mad at the NSA. The good news is NASA has cleaned up their sites since. So let's end on the biggest story of the week, which I think is the uncovering of a new cyber attack gang called Hidden Links. Essentially, Symantec released a 28-page report detailing a new cyber criminal or perhaps even nation-state hacker group that they're calling the Hidden Links. Now, uh, the report has a ton of information in 28 pages. First, it seems this group is probably based in China, according to much of the evidence Symantec has gathered. They also believe it's one of the largest groups out there, being between anywhere from 50 to 100 different hackers that are all working together, so a very, very big group. More importantly, though, is this is a very, very advanced group of attackers. They do many, many sorts of advanced techniques that you see in APTs. They they use zero day quite consistently. They're finding, discovering new undiscovered flaws and leveraging in their malware. And more importantly, as soon as one of their new zero days is discovered or patched, they quickly move on to a new zero day attack. Also, Semantic points out that this group is going after some pretty big fish, some pretty big targets. People like government organizations, defense contractors, uh, investment banks, and even security companies. In fact, one of the biggest things in this story is Semantic says this is the group that was responsible for the Bit9 attack a few months ago. If you remember, Bit9 is a security company that makes this uh, whitelisting uh, uh, security program. And a while back, their network was breached and the attackers made off with some digital certificates. As it turns out, it was likely this group and they used those digital certificates to sign their malware for a very specific targeted attack. They were going after some defense contractors who they knew happened to use Bit9 security software. So anyways, it's a very fascinating report. I, I'll put a link in our blog about it, so I recommend you go out there and read it. And to me, the takeaway here is all organizations, whether you're big or small, have to implement a defense in-depth security strategy. These sorts of advanced attacks come at you at many different vectors. They use the web, they use email, and they leverage all kinds of evasion techniques in zero day. And what that ultimately means is they may be able to sneak past some of your security mechanisms. And that's why you need layered security. You need more than one security mechanism. If a bad guy comes up with a, a new exploit that your IPS system can't recognize, well, if you're also running AV and reputation services and, and other types of security controls, you have a chance that one of those other security controls might pick up on another aspect of the attack. So I highly recommend you implement Defense in Depth. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. As always, check out our blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com. Also, follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.